Good evening. And welcome to another late night pipe smoking, ghost storytelling, Halloween chat. I'm Spaceman, and over the next 15 minutes, I will be giving an account of several ghostly paranormal like experiences that happened to me, as well as a couple of others at a company which I worked for in New Jersey for a period of nine years. But I will also be smoking some of this in my pipe. Cornell and Deal's Autumn Evening, a fine aromatic blend, as Cornell and Deal is always known for, blended by Craig Tyler, and a wonderful label. And if you look, you'll see a man sitting alone in a chair next to a window with a full moon shining through a half bare tree during the autumn and maybe he too is getting ready to have a pipe full of this wonderful tobacco the tobacco here is an aromatic and has a strong maple flavoring to it. The tin note is wonderful. The aroma is just very reminiscent of an early morning autumn pancake breakfast. The tobacco, a Virginia and Cavendish blend. Very nice shade of dark brown. It is just the right moisture level, primed for smoking. No drying time needed here. It is a very fruity, citrusy, sweet sugary blend with vanilla, rum, and maple being the predominant flavor. And also, spoken of some whiskey somewhere in there. So anyway, I'm going to be loading it into this pipe. And this is my Wiley Bent Dublin, actually called the Galleon. Don't go anywhere. I shall return. I am back. What a wonderful blend of tobacco this is. It's truly awesome and definitely lives up to its name. And as always, comes with this, that traditional Cornell and Deal label card, which fits nicely on the top of the tin. The tobacco itself is a coarse cut. Very buttery, very mapley, very tasty, awesome. But let's get to the stories, shall we? With no further ado, I'm going to start at the beginning. From the years of 1982 to 91, I was employed by a company in New Jersey, South Jersey area to be precise, in the Pine Barrens. The name of the company was Foss & Company. This company was sort of a department store, privately owned department store. Hardware, housewares on one end, big toy section, huge toy section, uh, famous for its toys in that area, and a separate department that sold unpainted furniture. 
there were three warehouses in the back of the building. During the time I worked there, I experienced some very strange occurrences. I want to start with one in particular. A co-worker of me and I were in the shop near the back of the building, right near Warehouse One. Going about our routine, I was building, I was an assembler, I assembled everything from bicycles to battery-powered riding toys to kids' tables and chairs. Whatever it was that had to be built, I built it. My friend was a frame maker, picture frames. So we're in the shop this one particular afternoon. And everything's kind of quiet. There's no customers lurking around or anything in the store. And all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, we hear the loudest crashing, smashing glass you've ever heard. It just sounded like a huge pane of glass that just was completely dropped from the ceiling or from a height of seven to eight feet and just completely shattered. I looked at him and he looked at me. I said, did you hear that? He said, yes. I said, let's go check it out. So we decide to get up, we go in the back of the warehouse I said, you take that end, I'll take this end. We probably searched for over 10 to 15 minutes, every corner, every nook and cranny. And over the next two weeks, we kept an eye out, as well as our coworkers, for a huge piece of broken glass never found them. The next incident was a face that appeared on a small concrete ramp which led out of a warehouse called the small warehouse or the little warehouse. You came out the door, the coffee machine was there, and there was a little ramp that went up into the showroom, the store area where the toys were. On that concrete ramp appeared a very sinister looking face. Now, from time to time we all know that you can make out faces in patterns on walls and wallpapers. This one was distinct very 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 distinct and we tried everything to get rid of this face we rubbed it with our foot we tried to clean her we tried to wipe it off with a rag it would not go away it was it was there for a long long time i want to say probably a year or maybe more until finally i guess dirt eventually covered this face it was about that big i would say about that big. Next incident was an incident that occurred with me and another co-worker. Different from the one that I worked with in the shop. By the way, the guy I worked with in the shop, his name was Mike. The other guy, the name is Kurt. One day in the afternoon, when we were finished our work, we were sitting in the middle of the store on the summer lawn furniture. When all of a sudden, out of nowhere, through the drop ceiling, we heard a large venting or exhausting of a powerful jet of air. And if, if I wanted to try to emulate that, it would be like, 
and it was extremely loud until it went down to it probably lasted um, a good 20 seconds momentarily after that my boss walks up one of my bosses I had two bosses and I we asked him if there was anything in that ceiling that could make that sound he said no and we could not explain it was it a truck's air brakes out front we looked out front when it happened there was no tractor trail out there there was no truck another mystery then there was the night we were putting out the by bringing in rather the bicycles every night every morning we would put the bicycles outside on display and every night we would bring them in okay now you have to understand the doors in the back of this store the doors that were there were locked they were permanently locked unless someone was picking something up a delivery a customer the only door that was open was the front door of the store, which was on this end, and the door we were bringing the bikes in, which would have been about, say, here, midway. So we're bringing the bikes in. I and my friend my, and my co-worker distinctly, clearly heard children running around and playing in the back of the store. Clear as a bell. And my friend looks at me as if... To, not to discount that there were people back there and said why don't you go find out what these people want because uh, you know I was getting ready we were going to close and we wanted to, so I wanted to see if I could figure out what they wanted and get them on their way so we could close up and go home I walked out there around the toy section up and down every aisle then I didn't when I didn't see anybody, I really started to get the chills. I went back into the unpainted section. There was nobody, not a trace of one person or one living thing. Now, it might be interesting to note that years later, when I went into this store, it had been sold out. They had gone out of business. and and. But there was still a warehouse in the back. I went in there, and there was a young man coming out with a hand truck, and I said, do you know about this store? He's like, are you talking about the strange events that go on here? I said, yes. He goes, and he looks at this other guy. He said, man, I told you. I tried to tell you, man. I tried, I tried to tell you there was stuff going on back in there. I hear boxes moving around by themselves. I hear all kinds of sounds. Pretty creepy. Another incident which I'm going to throw in to end the video is a sighting that my friend made of an elderly man with glasses and a bald head. And he told us of this man. I said, Describe the man to me describes the man to me. I said, that sounds like Bob that used to work here. He had passed away in 1984, and this was probably late 80s or so. Well, it was a very strange place indeed to work, but it also was a very nice company, and I enjoyed working there. But I just thought I would share those stories with you, being as it's Halloween. So you have a happy Halloween. And by all means, try some of this autumn evening. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Especially with an orange crush. And I shall see you on the other side. Good evening.